Hello and welcome to this ArtCam Express 2012 demonstration. In this demonstration I'm going to be showing you our top five features that we think that you may like and it's going to have a Christmas theme to this. Now I'm going to be showing you some old features that were already in ArtCam Express and I'm also going to be showing you some new features that are only available to Arkham Express 2012. Now if you take a look at the right hand side you can see I have no modules installed in this version of Arkham Express so this is all going to be done using the basic version of Arkham Express. Now if you've purchased an upgrade of 2012 and you're just taking a look at this video and you want to see what's new you can also take a look at what's new if you press help and click the what's new button. This will take you to a page which tells you all of the new features within ArtCam 2012. The first thing that I'm going to show you is first feature which is creating vectors from images. Now we do this by using a tool called the bitmap to vector tool. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to open a model and I'm going to browse to my Christmas folder. Here you can see I have a few files within here. and I'm going to open up this Christmas tree here. It's just a PNG file. Arkham Express can import all types of image files. So I'm going to open that. And there you can see it's asking me to set the height and the width the size of the model and also the origin. So I can change that to the center or any four corners if I wish. And I can also change the height. Let's change that to something a little bit smaller. Let's say 300 millimeters and then click OK. So that's changed the width and the height of the sheet. If I click on Untitled here, it will show me the size down the bottom there on the right hand side. Now what I'm going to do is basically trace around this picture. So I'm going to open up the bitmap to vector tool. Now if you take a look down the very bottom you can see ArtCam's colour palette and you can see there are lots of different shades of black and greys. There's lots of different colours within there. So what I need to do is to bring this down to a more manageable amount, ideally two colours and then I can tell ArtCam which colour that I'd like to trace around. So if I click reduce colors, I'll just move this out of the way. This has changed this, the amount of colors down to 32 colors. So if I start bringing that down, you can see that it's starting to wash into each other in the color palette. It's also doing the same within the actual image. So if I bring that right the way down, now I can bring this right the way down to two colors. Click OK. Now I want to use the black as the colour to trace around, so I'm going to use secondary colour. So I'll make sure that I click this and it's going to use the secondary colour, the black colour. And I'm going to click create vectors. Now I can close the bitmap to vector down. Let's just drop the contrast down of my image. And I'm just going to zoom in here. You can see it's given me some really nice curvy vectors there. It's not following all of the pixelation. So there you can see these vectors are ready to be machined now. I don't need to do anything with those. So you can see I've got my vectors for my Christmas tree. Now you can see that that was off the screen there. Another little new thing that we've got is that you can pan in the 2D view. So that's something that's been asked for quite often and you can do that within the 2D view now. You can also zoom within a specific area. So let's say for instance I was creating a polyline here and I've come off the screen here. What I can actually do is zoom out and then zoom back in and then carry on this polyline. So just a few small things that have changed there. Right, so let's go on to feature number two. 
and that's creating the big carvings. So what I'm going to do for this is to use these vectors that I've created just straight from the bitmap to vector and I'm going to do some vbit carving over this. So I'm going to select all of the vectors I'm going to go to the 3D view and turn on my vectors so you can see all of them within the 3D view. Go to toolpaths and I'm going to select create vbit carving toolpath. I'm going to select a tool which is a 32mm 120 degree v-bit. Now if I wish to see the maximum depth or the maximum width how deep that the cutter is going to get, click refresh and it will tell me how deep this is going to get. So I can then use the appropriate thickness material. I can also use a roughing tool if I wanted to blast a lot of the material out beforehand so I'd reduce wear on the V-bit cutter and we're going to define the material they say that this is 6 millimeters, and then click OK so that creates the material block for me and I can just click calculate now I can close the V-bit carving now and if I right click on toolpaths and simulate all toolpaths then you can see that it's simulated all of the toolpaths for me if I select simulation and then change the material here here you can see all of the material available to ArtCam I'm going to change it to a teak material and click apply so there you can see my V-bit carving of my Christmas tree so moving on to feature number three I'm going to show you how to create a relief just straight off from a photograph or an image. So I'm going to go to file and open and I'm going to select this Santa Claus image. Now I'm not going to click open straight away or double click on that because down here you can see I have a minimum Z or a maximum Z setting. So I'm going to change the maximum Z and I'm going to enter a setting of three millimeters. So this is automatically going to create a relief from this image of three millimeters high. And I'm going to click open. I'm not going to save my changes. Now you can see it's opened up my image. Now this is quite large at the moment. I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. Let's say 400 millimeters and then click OK. So what this has done, it's created a relief just from this image. So if I go to the 3D view and then rotate this around, you can see I've got this relief of Santa Claus. And this is ready to be machined now. So moving on to feature number four, I'm going to show you how to do some photo V carving within ArtCam Express. Now the way that we do this is go to toolpaths and select a machine relief toolpath. I'm going to do this over the whole of the relief and I'm going to first of all select a cutter, a finishing cutter and I'm going to use a 32mm 90 degree V-bit and select that. I'm going to change the step over, let's say about 7 millimeters and I'm also going to change the angle of the machining to be 30 degrees. I'm going to define the material, let's use 6 millimeters again and I'm going to set the material Z0 and the model position to the top. Click OK. So that's created my material block and I'm going to click calculate now. So this is calculating the finishing toolpath over the top of this relief. So if I just close the machine relief now and right click on the simulation and click simulate all toolpaths. This will give me a simulation of my photo v carve. 
if I just zoom out so you can see this properly and take a plan view of this you can see that that's created my photo v calf of Santa Claus so moving on feature number five I'm going to show you a few things that have changed within the relief clip art library and what's changed with clip art so I'm going to go to file and create a new model I'm going to do this 500 millimeters I'm not going to save the changes and I'm just going to delete the material I'm going to go straight into the 3d view I'm going to do all of this within the 3d view and I'm going to open up the relief clip art library now I'm going to come down to my Christmas folder here you can see I've got a stag and I've got a rock so what I'm going to do first of all is just grab this rock now what you'll notice is as I grab this it automatically loads within the background and it's automatically opened up my new transform tool so previously we had a dialogue box that was the clip art now this has been all incorporated into the transform tool so you can do everything here so what you can do is move this around in real time you can also rotate it around change the size of this like so you can also do all of this using the transform tool if you wish you can also change the anchor point so if I wanted to rotate around that anchor point I can do that so what I'm going to do is just go to the plan view and I'm going to move this rock down to here I'm going to change the size of this let's say about 250 millimeters now you can see the Z range here has gone up so you can see it's quite high so it's gone to 20.363 now I'm going to change the height of this down to let's say 10 and click apply so there you can see it's changed the clip art's size and I've not pasted this down yet let's move it down to round about there now what I can do with this I can either click paste or I can press enter on the keyboard and it will automatically paste it down delete the clip art and I will be exited from the transform tool so if I take another plan view you can see that that's pasted my rock down and I'm going to grab the stag now that will load in automatically now the great thing about the clip art now is if I just rotate this around now I want this stag to be just sitting on top of the rock and you can see that it's not got any feet at the moment so I need this to be sitting quite nicely on the rock now the good thing is that you can move this and in real time actually see the way that it's combining with the previous clip art that was pasted down so I can automatically see that so let's let's say move that to around about there so there you can see that that's sitting nicely just behind the rock and I'm going to paste this down this time I'll click paste on the transform tool now you can see that that's pasted the stag down so you can see it's sitting nicely so I could, it's really good the, the new preview with the clip art now I'm going to do something a little bit fun I'm going to turn this stag into Rudolph the reindeer so the way that I'm going to do that is to go into the objects folder and you can see I've got somewhere here a light bulb so what I'm going to do is drag this light bulb in you can see that this is quite small at the moment let's make it a little bit larger and I'm going to rotate this approximately 180 degrees like so let's just close the clip art for the time being and I'm going to place this onto uh, stag's nose to turn him into a reindeer I'm going to resize it like so and there you can see it's not quite coming through so what I'm going to do is change the Z range let's try about 20 so there you can see it's just going over 
his nose. Now, if you click here, this is the paste options. Now, it's automatically set to merge high. So what this will do, it will automatically merge this dome or light bulb or nose into the stag. If I were to add this, it would add onto the top of the stag and it would give me the light bulb on top of the stag's head. So make sure that it's merge high and click paste. And there you can see he's now got a big nose. So there you can see he's now Rudolph the red nose round here. Although it's not red, it's yellow. Right, so that's the top five features of Arkham Express 2012. I do have one more feature. So this is feature five and a bit. And this is delete waste material. So what I'm going to do is to open up this Christmas tree waste. So I'm going back to the Christmas tree that I created originally. And you can see what I've done is deleted all of the baubles from off the Christmas tree. But you can also see I've got this line here that's not quite closed. So I'm going to show you another new thing within 2012. If I click create polyline, here I have add to existing vector. So what I can do with this is to select onto the end of the vector, select onto this vector, do the same on this side. What this has allowed me to do is to add this onto that vector. So it gets rid of the extra process or the extra step which was to join the vector up at the end. So I can now just add vectors to an existing vector. So now that that vector's sorted out, I can now machine this. If you take a look within the toolpaths, I already have a profile. So I'm just going to edit this profile. Just select all of the vectors. The finished depth is going to be 6mm, so I'm just going to cut this part out with, with a 3mm end mill. And I'm going to click calculate now. So if I just simulate this, you can see that that's cut the part out. Now previously, you would have been left with that uh, if you wanted to create a PDF, which is another thing that you can do within Arkham Express, a three-dimensional PDF. If you wanted to send that to a customer, you would have to send it as it is now. What we can do now is delete the waste material, and then you can just send the actual piece that's going to be cut. So if I click on Simulation, Delete Waste Material has an icon here, or I can right click on the simulation and select Delete Waste Material. Now I can auto delete the waste material. So what that does, it automatically, ArtCam automatically assumes what is the waste material and it gets rid of all of the parts that ArtCam believes to be the waste material. Now that may not be correct because you may need to keep areas on the inside. Let's say for instance, how does ArtCam actually know what is waste and what's to be kept? So what you can do is undo all of these steps also and you can delete pick material. So I can pick what material I want to be deleted. So let's say I want to delete the outside there. Let's keep the inside of the star. Let's delete that there, that one there and that one there. And let's delete the tree trunk. So let's say that that's what I wanted and I can keep that material. Now I can also undo this if I get rid of something that I wanted. So I can just undo that, go all the way back. And we also have keep pick material. So I can just select the portion that I want to keep. So let's click this outline and that's just kept the area that I want to keep. And finally, I'll just change the material of this. Let's change it to a green wax so that you can see my Christmas tree. So that brings an end to this demonstration and many thanks for your time. Hope you have a very Merry Christmas and hopefully I'll see you on the next demonstration. Goodbye.